hey, what's up guys, Gratuitous here. In this video, I wanna do a review on the M Audio Oxygen Pro 49. Just to let you guys know that all of my reviews are specifically for the FL Studio DAW, as that is the only music program that I use. And this M Audio Oxygen Pro gave me a great experience inside of FL Studio. At first, the initial setup was a little, or no, not a little, it was very overwhelming and quite hard. And that comes from someone like me who has been making beats with FL Studio for many years now. But I did all the testing, I figured it out, and if you guys come to my website, I wrote an in-depth review so you can see all my different rating categories and the final verdict, I gave it a four and a half out of five, okay? So I feel that this is uh, fairly priced. I feel that uh, you guys are gonna get a good experience with FL Studio. Now, before we get into the review, I just wanna let you guys know that I recently was approved as an FL Studio trainer. This is huge news for me because I've been teaching how to make beats with FL Studio for many years now, and that's such an honor and a great privilege. So if you guys come to itsgratuitous.com, I have over 26 FL Studio courses ranging from just various topics of how to make beats. I just wanna quickly talk about my piano course here because if you guys are wanting to learn the piano, you know, that's probably why you're buying a MIDI keyboard, you wanna play the keys, right? And so what I discovered as a beat maker is that we as beat makers play the piano differently than a classical piano player, right? If you go to YouTube, you search in piano tutorial, typically you're gonna be learning from a classical standpoint and you're, you know, when you watch the tutorial, you're gonna be like, well, how does this relate to making beats? And that's what I found. So what do you learn in here? So I'm gonna teach you how to play with the left hand, with the right hand. You guys are gonna learn improvisation. As a beat maker, improvisation is everything. Okay, it all comes down to, to picking a key and a scale, which dictates the notes you're allowed to play. And then the muscle memory comes in. You have to practice because now you know the notes, then you start practicing, okay? You guys will hear me play the keys later in this review. But again, I just wanna let you guys know that this piano course is there. It's gonna help you learn the keys to get up and running, okay? So in this review, I want to go through each section with you and talk about it more in depth. But before we do, I want to uh, just kind of talk about a few things that stood out to me, okay? So first of all, it has an on and off switch. I always think that's a nice feature to have. Not all MIDI keyboards have an on and off switch. So for example, if you're done at the end of the day, you can just turn it off, all the lights turn off. Also, if it bugs out for whatever reason, instead of unplugging the cable and plugging it back in or closing FL Studio and reopening FL Studio, you can easily just turn it off and on. So I think that's a really important feature to have and it comes with the Oxygen Pro. Uh, the next thing is the keys, all right? So these are nice full size semi-weighted keys. They are a little bit light to play, but that's just being nitpicky. They are nice keys. For example, let me just play for just for you, so. Okay, the next thing is it has the loop button right here. So not all MIDI keyboards have this, and with MIDI scripting, you can set up any button to do this feature, but it's nice to have a dedicated button for um, the loop button. So what does the loop button do? So if you look up here in FL Studio, it says song mode or pattern mode, and so that's what the loop button allows you to do. It allows you to switch between uh, pattern mode and song mode, okay? So for example, if we're in pattern mode, it's just gonna play the pattern. All right, so we'll stop. Now, if I hit the loop button, again, it changes to song mode and it's gonna come over here and we can listen to it with a drum loop now, okay? Okay, now, since we are here, I want to quickly talk to you about um, the transport buttons, okay? So in my review, I told you that um, I've always known a MIDI keyboard to function like this in FL Studio, okay? So the play should play and pause. You guys can read more on this, but I'll walk you through it quickly. And with the free MIDI script, which I wrote, it allows the MIDI keyboard to work like a normal MIDI keyboard that I've seen in all my years of using FL Studio, okay? So this is how it works. So if we hit play, it plays, and then it pauses. If we hit play again, we can hit stop, it brings it back. If we click over here and hit play, and then hit stop, it brings it back to where we clicked. If we hit stop again, it brings it back to the beginning of the bar or the highlighted area. Uh, it has forward a bar, or it goes back a bar, okay? We have record, as you can see up here. 
record on, record off, and then same with the loop button. So pattern mode and saw mode. Now, again, this is essential just for a fast workflow. And one cool thing that this MIDI keyboard has, which my other MIDI keyboard didn't, is you can actually turn on the metronome from the MIDI keyboard itself. So you just hold on shift and metro. As you can see, it turns on the metronome right there, right here. Okay. Now I want to talk to you about the M Audio Oxygen Pro 49 preset editor. So this is their MIDI mapping software. It is so powerful. It allows you to essentially map all your knobs, all your sliders, uh, your drum pads. For example, I'm selected on this one. You can select the color when it's just, um, you know, not being pressed. And then you can change the color when it is pressed. For example, uh, I have orange here, and if I, if I push it, it goes it goes green. Uh, the same with like your sliders, you can select a slider, you can select the CC number. So I really think this is super intuitive and super innovative from M Audio. Uh, this really opens up a lot of doors to allow the user to decide how they want to use the MIDI keyboard, because by itself, the MIDI keyboard is awesome, but many times in the past, um, you know, the company would set things up but maybe it wouldn't go into your workflow or maybe your music program wouldn't take advantage of that. And this software essentially just bypasses all that and it allows you to figure out how you wanna use it. When you use this MIDI keyboard, there is DAW mode and preset mode. So when, I, when I'm in preset mode, you can see when I switch banks, it just switches banks, okay? But if I'm in DAW mode, it actually triggers notes. And so that's not what you want. So you wanna be in preset mode, okay? And if you hold down preset mode, uh, you are able to see the different presets. And for myself, I created my own custom preset as the very, very first one. You guys can actually purchase this. So if you go to your next bank, you can see that we have our next set of knobs. So how it works is there is four banks, okay? And in this case, we have eight knobs and nine sliders. So if we have eight knobs, we actually have four banks. That's 32 knobs you actually have. And if there's nine sliders times four, that's 36 sliders you have. So right now, if I wanted to use this knob, it's under the first bank, which is, I just have as orange. If you go to the next bank, you can see now it's kind of like a teal aqua. So we can use this knob, which is essentially now it's nine. Okay, so right here, this is knob one. Now it's knob nine. I'll show you quickly how to set that up uh, in a second here. Uh, but what I'm saying is I created a premium preset bank to get it set up for you. It took a lot of figuring out. So if you don't want to worry about setting any of this stuff up, if you just want to get a good experience, plug and play, you guys can check uh, my premium preset. I will leave it on the review. Just I'll leave it right here for you guys, okay, if you guys want to purchase it. But in the preset mode, I'm just going to hold it down. And let's just say we select uh, the mini grand. So if you have this MIDI keyboard, you can follow me. So in the mini grand, I'm going to select it. And so the issue out of the box with this MIDI keyboard is you can see that this is blinking, the tempo sync. And this is going to cause you issues inside of FL Studio because what's happening is uh, the tempo mode is set to internal. So the preset is in the MIDI keyboard right now, but we we want to bring that into our MIDI mapping software, for example. So you're going to go file, you're gonna go retrieve the preset and the preset was actually in slot three or in preset three, okay? So I'm gonna select that, you say get. And when I press okay, you're gonna see everything changes and it's gonna sync with what we're seeing on this MIDI keyboard, okay? As you can see down here, it says the mini grand. Uh, now the problem is it's set to internal. So you wanna set this to external and then you can literally just go send preset and I am going to go preset three, because that's where the mini grand was, this mini grand, and you send it right back in. But I wanna show you how to change the color in case you're interested in doing this yourself. So you have your pad, and uh, right now it's red, and when you press it, it goes white, okay? Now, let's say we wanna change that. Let's just say we wanna make it um, a green, and then when we press it, we're gonna make it go violet, okay? So we go file, and you wanna send the preset back into the MIDI keyboard. So that's just how this works, okay? It kind of uh, goes back and forth that way. Now you can see that it didn't change and I'm still on bank one. So sometimes you have to hold down preset and then you just enter it back in. And as you can see now it went green. So it's green and violet. All right, let's quickly go through this list and I will break down each section 
and why I created this category for you guys to understand. Now, again, on my review, I have left you different images and different videos. If you want more information, this review is just kind of a quick summary. Overall, this thing is a buy if you are interested in a good MIDI keyboard for FL Studio, okay? So here is what I thought about the M Audio Oxygen Pro 49. So the piano key quality is good. All right. I'm just gonna uh, load up my preset because I know it's all set up and it works, okay? Uh, I just like the colors and then again, we go through banks, got your different banks and stuff, okay? All right, so the piano key quality, uh, these are nice semi-weighted full-size keys. So I do not feel like I'm squished. The actual playing is just a little bit light. It kind of steals a little bit from your emotion, but honestly, it's being nitpicky, okay? I'm able to play the piano very well on this MIDI keyboard. And for the price, I feel that it's a, an extremely fair value. Um, but it just kind of leaves me feel like a, it, it leaves me feeling like I want a little bit more as I'm playing. That's why I gave it a four or five. Okay. Uh, the next one is the overall build quality. Everything on this MIDI keyboard is built extremely well. There's one small little thing which I mentioned in the review. I even left um, a video showing it. But just the sliders are a little bit cheap when you move them left and right. Um, again, you guys can come to the review page and watch the video, but when you actually use the slider, when you move it, when you go up and down, it feels great. Okay. So it's just kind of, again, a little nitpicky thing when it goes left and right. It's just a little bit cheap. Essentially the sliders, like the, the actual caps are probably the cheapest thing on this MIDI keyboard. Everything else is built so well. Okay. From the pitch wheel, the pitch wheel has awesome spring back. It feels really, really good. The mod wheel also has just a little bit of resistance so that as you move it, you actually feel like you're able to get more precise on your parameter. This MIDI keyboard has clicky buttons. At first I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like the clicky buttons, but they actually grew on me. Clicky buttons are actually, I think more powerful than the squishy buttons. So for example, uh, a squishy button would be something like this over here on the side, or even like your drum pads, kind of like a squishy button. Sometimes MIDI keyboards have the squishy buttons for your transport buttons. And uh, for me, over time, they were starting to fail on my old MIDI keyboard. So the clicky buttons are nice because when you push it, for example, in the octave, so if I just play a note, up an octave, up an octave, or I go down. Right? So, the clicky button is nice because you push it, you don't have to push it hard, and it registers. And when you hear the click, you know, you know it works. The squishy button, sometimes it was like I push it and didn't work and it's like, oh, and over time it started to fail. So the clicky buttons I think are, are a huge upgrade. This MIDI keyboard has a good weight to it. So as you're playing it or moving around, there's no creaking, there's no cheap plastic. Like, like yes, it's made of plastic, but it's, it's good plastic, okay? I, I feel that. The price I've paid, I feel like it's a good solid unit. I want to scroll down here because I want to show you a picture. Uh, this MIDI keyboard at the bottom of it, it has nice rubber feet. So look at these feet so you guys can see these are nice big rubber feet and there's six of them and they work so good. All right. When you use this MIDI keyboard, like it stays in place. As I play the keys, all I'm thinking is I'm playing the keys. It's not nothing sliding. So that's why I've given this uh, five stars for the build quality. It's built very, very well. Um, and so the overall build quality kind of goes with the knob type. So the reason why I left the knob type here is because different MIDI keyboards give you different knobs. Sometimes there's endless encoders where uh, the knob can uh, literally just keep spinning. This one actually has uh, a beginning and it has an end, okay? Uh, the nice thing about an absolute encoder from my research as I was doing this review is this little white notch, you can feel it. So it can be used to visually see where it is uh, on, you know, in your software, or you can feel it. So you don't have to look and you'd be like, okay, well now I'm over here. You can actually feel this little notch. Okay. Uh, these knobs, even though they are made of plastic, they have a nice resistance to them. So it makes it feel luxury it makes it feel very very good let's just hop into fl studio i'll show you how to quickly set one up and then i can also show you just this, the different banks and stuff too okay now if you want more information on how to set up these knobs these knobs and sliders they both have what's called soft takeover it's a 
It's a feature that allows you to use knobs over multiple banks. Again, I have a video on the review page. Just quickly though, so how it works is, let's say on a slider, you're just gonna right click, you're gonna go link to controller. And so I'm on the very, very first bank, and I know that because the first bank is orange on the drum pads. So I'm just gonna move the slider, and as you can see, it moves, okay? And with FL Studio, if you look up here, you can see that if it's orange, it means that it's it actually is receiving the MIDI, the MIDI data, and it's also mapped to a parameter, okay? Let's move another knob, and you're gonna see it goes green. So as you can see right here, it's green. And that's just telling us that FL Studio is getting the MIDI message, but it's not mapped to anything, okay? So if we are on the first knob, and then we're gonna go to the next bank. Now, this is nine, okay? So one to eight, next bank, nine. So you're gonna see that this knob doesn't work, but FL Studio sees it up here. So we can right click here, go link to controller, and we're using the same knob to control nine, and then we go back to the other bank, and now it's gonna control eight. All right, okay, so moving on on the rating system. Uh, so the FL Studio compatibility, so essentially this is like a five out of five. Uh, the reason why I gave it a four and a half out of five is because just the setup. The setup was very, very tricky to figure out. Again, even someone like me who has been making beats for like 10 years with FL Studio, purchasing this MIDI keyboard. So what, if you read the review, what I said was when I first plugged it in, like my stomach like dropped. I was like, oh no, because I was past my return period. And so I was stuck with the MIDI keyboard no matter what. And so I was trying to use it and I was like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this to work with FL Studio. It took me quite a few hours of reading and uh, there was people on the image line forums also having troubles with this. So I was like, okay, hey, I gotta figure out how to get this keyboard to work. To get this set up, um, you just plug it in, the biggest thing is uh, on the tempo sync, it has to be external. And then you guys can just install this free MIDI script. And that's all you need to really get a great experience with FL Studio. If you want to get the hands on and stuff like that, um, for myself, I really don't make music that way. As much as you know, you want the hands on, it's always easier with a mouse inside of FL Studio. But if you want that hands on, if you want to be able to use your sliders again, I will leave a link here as well for that premium preset, okay? But you don't need the premium preset to get a good experience in FL Studio because the transport buttons and the keys are essentially all that I really use a MIDI keyboard for, right? I hit record, I hit play. Now you go to play, you hit stop, you go edit the notes. And so that's all I look for in a MIDI keyboard to, you know, if that experience is good, then we're good to go. The premium preset that I was talking about is just more for like a, a luxury if you want to have all your knobs and stuff, but I use that stuff very little. For the ease of use, like I said, um, it was hard. Um, but now that I understand how to use it, it's pretty easy. And with their software, it's really, really intuitive, okay? This is very, very good software. Uh, again, I would like to be able to maybe copy and paste some of these pads. So for example, let's say we want green to be for bank one. It would be nice to be able to copy and paste because otherwise there's a lot of clicking. So the MIDI mapping software, uh, the reason why I gave it four and a half out of five is because I wasn't able to get the transport buttons to work with FL Studio properly. I had to go the MIDI scripting route. Again, the MIDI script is right there for free. Now, I feel that this is a good value for what you are getting from M Audio here. I don't feel that M Audio has gouged you or gouged us on price. I think that this is a fairly priced product that delivers for what they are telling you what it does. Uh, the cheapest thing was honestly like the sliders, but that's only left to right. When you actually move it, there's a good resistance there. And you, I, even when I was testing with different uh, plugins and stuff like that, I was able to get quite precise in my, you know, my testing. So I think this is a great MIDI keyboard. The reason for four out of five is I think maybe it's priced maybe a little bit higher than uh, competitors to them out there. And I really think it just comes down to the drum pads, okay? So for me, I would rather have them remove the drum pads and save the 30 to $40. And if you're new to that concept, so these MIDI keyboards, many times these companies just jam pack features, which you may or may not need. And so a drum pad is essentially the same thing as a key. When you press a key, it sends a note as well as the velocity. If you hit a drum pad, it sends the note as well as the velocity. It just feels different. If you want drum pads, I suggest buying a dedicated drum pad controller. 
Okay, many times you're probably going to get better drum pad quality, maybe better integration, whatever. Because these things, they're average, maybe above average. In in other words, they're they're your typical uh, MIDI keyboard drum pad. So when I buy a MIDI keyboard for myself, I am mainly focused on the quality keys and transport buttons that work. If the knobs and the sliders weren't there, I would miss them, but I really don't use them too much. The drum pad I never use, and again, I always just think it's just an added cost to the product. Um, okay, so the final verdict, guys, I gave it a four and a half out of five. I feel that you will get a great experience. I know I say good here, but I, honestly, you, you will get a great experience with FL Studio. Uh, you will have to install the MIDI script. It's easy to install. Once you set it up, you're good to go. Uh, there's no performance hit or anything like that. You just install it and uh, on this review page, I have a video showing you how to install it, okay? Also, if you click here and purchase, I will receive a commission if you purchase it through Amazon and clicking this link, okay? I just wanna talk about this piano course again. So if you guys wanna learn the keys, this will teach you how to play the piano from a music producer's perspective. So we're always focused on improvisation and creating catchy loops, right? And a good way to practice the piano is over top of drum loops. Right? You're going to keep practicing melodies and stuff like that. I will teach you both the left hand, the right hand, improvisation. Okay. And closing out, um, if you guys want to stay updated with me, you guys can come to itsgratuitous.com forward slash FL Studio and you guys will join the email list. Uh, one request that a lot of you guys have been asking me for is how to make a beat right? You want to see a course, how to make a beat from scratch. And so I've been practicing the piano and uh, one melody that keeps sticking with me, I think this might be the melody that we're going to use in that upcoming beat making course. It goes like this, okay? So again, this is with the M Audio Oxygen Pro solid MIDI keyboard for FL Studio. Uh, if you purchase it, I did all like the hard testing for you guys. It works. It works great, okay? Uh, so here we go. So this is a little melody. So... So I've been playing the piano for about uh, seven or eight years now, and it's all about practicing and muscle memory, okay? So um, a MIDI keyboard is your first step into getting into making high quality beats, right? So as a beat maker, we have original compositions, which is typically where you're going to be heading if you are working with a MIDI keyboard. There's also the sampling approach. You can even sample your own music. I even have a course on that inside the membership there. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at itsgratuitous.com forward slash contact. I hope you guys enjoy the M Audio Oxygen Pro uh, through my testing. I got it up and running good. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and talk to you guys later.